he talked about how he enjoyed the family. He liked it because they were very close. Of course they're close. Witches are always close. What are you talking about? That's why they stand around the campfire and stir up their witches' brew. That's what they do. Witches do their, what do you call it? Their damn, uh, what is it that they be doing? Their spells together. Nigga. <laughs> If you have not already done so, please remember to like and share this video because it is so important to my success here on the YouTube. And if you do not have an investment slash retirement plan in place through your employer, please check out the Acorn app below. So let's say this, Lamar, don't you ever come on black TV, ever. Wait a minute, it wasn't me, it was TV one. But Ninja, don't you ever. Come on screen with that junky itch ever again. I said, what is wrong with this nigga? Is he allergic to that vegan leather jumpsuit he got on? What the Closest person to us. And I, I wish I had, and I wish I would have been up front with her about my ways from the door. And maybe things would be a little different now. You know, for any woman that ever comes into my life, you know, if you want to stay there, I, don't ever compare yourself to Khloe Kardashian because what she did for me, you could never do. When I woke up from the coma, Chloe was like my first nurse, man. I never would think my wife would have to wipe my ass and show me pictures of my mother so I can remember. You can't even decipher your dreams and reality. You know what I mean? So I'm married and having dreams of my wife cheating on all these, you know, with these men and shit like that. And I can't really decipher if it's really happening or it's just these dreams you just... Now, let's talk about how Tasha K ruins another bitch life. Well, actually, we're going to do the uncensored part. And then we're going to talk about how Tasha K just, you know, shits doing this whole dude life. So anyway, guys, if you all recall, or if you are a Tasha K fan, a wino, then um, you would know that a couple of days ago, maybe a week back, she did an interview with Lamar Odom's manager or ex-manager. Oh my God. That lady is so scorned. You heard me? That lady is scorned. But anyway, let's talk about the uncensored part first. So let me break down the situation according to him. Was his parents, okay? He grew up in New York. I think it was Jamaica, Queens. If I'm wrong, I'll put it below. But he uh, grew up in New York, New York with both parents, okay? But then what happened was he really doesn't talk about the reason as to why his mama just up and left his pappy. But all he knew was it was him, his mother, and his grandmother. The okay. question that was profound that he asked that I think mattered, you know, was that he wanted to know was his father an addict before or after his mom left. But see, the situation is this. Whether your mother was leaving him or not, that addiction was still in him, eating at him. You know, sometimes addiction is genetic, hence the reason why your ass got a whole problem with booze sugar down there, okay? Taraji P. Okay, now Taraji P, let me tell you something. When you look younger than what you really are, you get a whole bunch of, uh, you know, young dudes trying to hunch on top of you. Let me tell you that, okay? Because in my 48 years, you know, some of these young dudes that be in their 20s, I'd be like, that is gross. Like, that's what I think. Matter of fact, some of these dudes, I'm old enough to be their grandmother. Ugh. But anyway, Taraji, don't be in your feelings, girl, because you dodged a whole bullet with that one. Could you imagine dealing with all that dick confusion he got going on? But keep like, who knew that him and Taraji was hunching around? I didn't know. I didn't. I never knew that he, him and Taraji, you know, was, you know, doing the Humpty Dance behind the scenes. Okay, but so that's a good thing because it wasn't hum humiliating to her. So I will give him kudos for not humiliating Taraji. And I will give that, you know, huzzy, <coughs> excuse me, Chloe, kudos for not 
you know, making it a part of keeping up with the Kardashians, because you know them bitches, okay? If you stub your toe, that's just going to be a part of keeping up with the Kardashians. Okay. And he said that he really did have love for her, and it was the first grown-up, relationship that he ever had with a black woman now that was very telling okay because let me tell you something also that for some reason um it's weird but one time i had met this basketball player dude uh that was in college okay and i would say to him why do you only date white women and he was like because nay only white women like me and I said to myself, well, you got that right, because I ain't believe Because black women, are we going to be honest with each other and say the truth and tell the truth? None of us don't want that Lamar Odom. Y'all can have that motherfucker. I don't want him, so I ain't mad at him that, you know, he was like the first uh, relationship I ever had with a black woman. You can have that nigga. When he talked about Taraji, that I think that if Taraji was to see this, she'd probably be in her feelings a little bit, the Virgo, not meaning that she about to leave her, you know, dude. Is she still with her young dude? I don't know. But not like she gonna leave her dude and then run back to his uh, bunny ranching ass. That's not what's gonna happen. But what Lamar Odom said was that he was so into her that he used to keep his picture of her with him on the road and he could not wait to get back to see her and spend time with her i keep telling y'all ninjas be human too they be having feelings just like us it's just i found out too late trying and broke so many god on hearts niggas stretch niggas still trying to kill me Shit, i can't go back to the dmv without a pistol no, because he was so young and immature and inexperienced with women he really couldn't talk to to Raji about how, okay, I have feelings for you, but I'm falling in love with Khloe Kardashian. I'm gonna say this 1,000 times. To Raji, girl, you missed a damn bullet. Okay. What I found was astounding. And it makes me feel like, does Chris still like tell you what to do, Lamar? Does he still, does she still tell you what to do? Because it was like, I don't know, like he was still under a Kardashian spell or something. And I'm saying to myself, nigga, do you know that Chloe then moved on and off of another basketball player? Do you know that boy? Child, are you still stuck in time? By the end of it, he did say he needed to get some help. Negro, you need some help, okay? Because it's been years since you done been with Chloe, child. She done had a whole baby by another ninja. And you still is in your feelings about her? Oh, he talked about how he enjoyed the family. He liked it because they were very close. Of course they close. Witches are always close. What are you talking about? That's why they stand around the campfire and stir up their witches brew. That's what they do. Witches do their, what do you call it? Their damn, uh, what is it that they be doing? Their spells together. Nigga. So moving what? on, he talked about... The situation that happened down there to that brothel in Las Vegas where he almost died, child. I think he said he had 72 heart attacks and 137 strokes. That shit ain't funny, child. But he said that um, he died. He was in a coma. He was in a coma for a good while. He was in a coma. But he, he is adamant about the fact that he did not do drugs at that time and that he was sober. Let's talk about... Tasha K in her interview with that young lady who was supposedly his manager that was trying to help him out, you know, putting money behind him to make him be a better person. Child, it wouldn't, mama. It wouldn't be my back. And for me, that is theft. If you are asking people to lend you money and you don't have any intention of paying back, that's like stealing money from people to me. I mean, that's my personal opinion, right? So, that's one. And another, th another thing is that there were some women claiming that he um, was involved in some sexual activities with females and trannies, right? And those people got herpes. And that's actually also true. <laughs> Making me look like I'm some shady manager. Well, I have truly, sincerely helped these men to recover, to become healthier to have new products because at that point where he came to China, nobody wanted to do business with him. They didn't even want to give him a pair of shoes for free. That's how bad his image was, right? So me putting 18 months time of hard work, far away from home, putting my own financial money into this uh -uh. man. Uh -uh 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 -uh. Unless he old rock star, 
I'm never going to put my money behind nobody that's an addict, unless you're a rock star. Because rock stars and rappers and singers and all them creators, oh, they can get, you know, they can still, you know, drugs make them feel better. But when you a uh, NBA player, ugh, I mean, that shit is messing with your performance. So what happens is... The woman that Tasha K was talking to, who was his manager, had said that Lamar Odom had some um, debt issues, that he was borrowing money from people and he wasn't paying them back. So when I put two and two together, when I think about it, you know, you down there to the Bunny Ranch or whatever brothel you in, you probably owe the owner mad money Okay, you round there hunching on them girls. And, I, I, you know, I don't want to, you know, speculate on some things, you know, because I don't know true facts. But I know in the street life, when you owe people money like that, and then you dumb enough to come back and borrow some more money, meaning those, you know, those, them, eh, eh, eh. Honey, you're not going to walk out there. You're not going to walk out the door alive. They're not going to let you do it. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about that auntie. Oh, that auntie was not playing no games. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. The auntie looked like she has been through some addiction problems herself, but that don't make her a less of a problem. I mean, of a person, okay? But auntie basically put them Kardashians on blast and said, you know, when Lamar was in the hospital, okay, them Kardashians didn't say shit to us. I said, ooh. So the auntie seen some, you know, bull snit coming through the door. Next minute, you know, it was some dudes shoving NDAs in their face, okay? The auntie said, I'm not signing shit. Well, you can't see Lamar. I said, ooh, that is treachery. And wasn't that shit on keeping up with the Kardashians? Listen, success at all costs. That's all I'm gonna say it. It's just success at all costs. So, you know, and, he, and then at the end of the day, he's still like, nobody could ever compare to uh, Chloe Kardashian. And you know, he got a whole girlfriend now. You know that, right? The bitch named Sabrina. And I'm saying to myself, uh, do you like her for real? Anyway, lovers, if you have not already done so, please remember to like and share this video because it is so important to my success here on the YouTube. Now, remember this, the same people that you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet. On the way down, naysayers, my patron loves. Have a good one.